I was with a guy when he got struck by lightning. My friends and I were driving from Alabama to uh, New Orleans, and it started raining. Lightning actually struck near my car, and we were like, ah, and we like swerved. Uh, I lost control of my car, and I drove it into a ditch. And all my friends and I get out. I fucking hitchhiked to a gas station, and I go up, and I go, hey, I just wrecked my car. I need to get a tow from this guy. And he goes, I don't go out in the rain. I've had bad times. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but seriously, sir, you, it's your job. You've got to help me. And uh, he goes, Fuck. and he goes and he gets in his tow truck and I get in the tow truck and I go, so why do you hate the bad weather so much? And he goes, my sister's kid got struck by lightning at the beach. And I go, oh, wow, dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is she okay? And he was like, nope. <laughs> and I go, well, you know what they say, lightning never strikes twice in the same place. And he goes, my brother got killed by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh, okay. And that shut me up. And then we're driving down, and my car's gone. And the water took it down, and now all you can see from of my car <laughs> is a little bit of the roof and the antenna that had like a jack in the bottom <laughs> of the water or something. But eventually he's able to pull the, the car over this huge ditch. Then he goes to like move the cable, and fucking lightning strikes right there and all of a sudden I hear the guy scream <laughs> and he's on the ground holding his arm like his right shoulder it didn't hit him but it hit so close I guess it charged all the elect all the fucking metal around it he gets up he just looks at me like with the maddest eyes I'm ever I'm surprised he didn't electro punch <laughs> <you> <laughs> out of the and, and the guy just starts walking away from my car and I walk up to him and I go how much do I owe you sir how much do I owe you and he just looks at me and I'm holding my wallet out and he put his hand in my wallet and took every bit of money out of my wallet <laughs> and just walked away with it you know, that's half the reason I had a kid, was so I could feed her misinformation. I was trying to get Millie to go to the bathroom, but she didn't want to go, and I asked her if she liked bears, and she was like, yeah, of course I like bears. And I was like, well, bears eat poop, and bears live in the toilet, so oh, you need what? to feed the bears. Why did you do that? Or are you going to starve? Why did you do that? I don't know, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. A a bear oh, like bear is waiting for her to sit down after you come out and eat? I, oh, I, man, you're an idiot. I'm pretty sure my mother had a kid just for the indentured servitude. Like, I'd get home from school at 2.30. I had to call my mom, and she would give me the list of, like, seven hours of chores I had to do that day. That was her way of keeping me out of trouble. And so it was, like, clean out the rain gutters, cut the grass, repaint the living room. I just painted it last week, painted it again. You sure it was, like, to build skills? Like, maybe she's, like, Mr. Miyagi. She's like, show me, clean the gutter. <laughs> she throws a dragon strike. Like, one day it's all going to come together for me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be attacked by I'm a gonna... guy covered in leaves. You'll be I know this. <laughs> Somebody's going to assassinate the president. My mom's going to be like, fold the towel. <laughs> Maybe I'm a sleeper agent and I don't even know it. <laughs> Maybe you missed your calling. <laughs> Jeff's in elementary school, so think about this. I was like third grade. His mom's friend came to pick him up. Teacher says, okay, Jeff, you know her, right? And Jeff goes, I've never seen her before in my life. This lady's trying to kidnap me. And the friend is like, okay, haha, Jeff, come on. Really, tell her who I am that you know me. And Jeff says, I really don't know. I'm kind of scared by all of everything that's happening right now. It got worse because eventually they got me to agree that I knew her. But then I said that the reason I'd lied was because she touched me. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> hey, weren't you in a car crash, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we should that. talk about that, yeah. I have a very nice friend who wanted to buy a Vespa. She knows I have a motorcycle license, so she asked if I would be kind enough to drive it back to her house for her. So I complied, and I was driving to Lamar, uh, going about 40 miles an hour, and I had to make a left turn, and I couldn't figure out the turn ratio and so i ran straight into a curb i did a flip in the air i landed on my neck bounced over a sidewalk and then landed on the other side of the grass the guy who who stopped and called the paramedics uh the guy said it looked awesome <laughs> and i felt so bad about wrecking this vespa that this girl has only owned for about 10 minutes did she see you uh, wreck it no we got separated driving and so uh. they had to come back and they just saw the bike in pieces <laughs> Anyway, so then the paramedics come. The paramedics turned out to be two super hot chicks, and they laughed and laughed and laughed at me, and that was emasculating. And then three cops showed up, and then they were laughing and laughing and laughing and how, asking how I could possibly crash a scooter. <laughs> you know? It was all very, very embarrassing. I never, really I never really talked to you about that. You used to fight a lot? I, got, I, got, I don't know if I fought as much as I got this shit kicked out of me a lot. You know, I, got, I was thinking about this the other day for some reason. I got hit so hard in the parking lot of a gas station by a dude named Porch. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that there was a dent in my forehead for three months. All because like I walked outside and... Uh, I got pulled into a fight where I had to defend my friend and his wife. And uh, after I hit porch, as hard as I could in the stomach, and he went, 
Ugh. And then he did that cartoon move where he pounded the top of my head, and I saw like birds and stars and shit. <laughs> it was like, I realized things weren't going my way, so I started to try to run away. You know that thing in the movies, like in Friday the 13th, when like you see Jason and you start to run away from him, and then Jason's walking, and you can't run fast enough, and you fall down and you trip, and you're like, get up, asshole. It's like, how could you fall? There's not even, there's anything to trip on. I did that. I fell, and I skinned up my arm, and then he ripped my shirt off, and then he put the dent in my forehead, and it was pretty much all downhill from there. What's the worst thing you ever did to your mother? You know how, like, in the old movies, they would rig a bucket full of water above a door so that when yeah. somebody opened the door, it would tip the water over? Yeah. I saw that when I was a kid one time. <laughs> so I didn't understand the whole, like, bucket rope thing. So I just hung a bucket <laughs> over the door. So that when she opened the door, a bucket full of water hit her in the head. That must have really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> must have really hurt. I remember looking at it and going, like, how did this go wrong? <laughs> this is, I'm really confused about this. She's on the ground, and she's in pain, and I'm just like, how did I fuck this up? <laughs> did you ever burn stuff when you were a kid? Were you ever a little pyromaniac? No. No. Eh? Well, I burned ants with a magnifying glass a couple times. So you never actually set fire to stuff? No, I wasn't one of those kids that liked to set fire to stuff. My friend Solomon, who was the kind of kid that would set fire to shit, we were in an empty lot walking to my house one day in the dead of winter. I turn around, and he's just lighting a bunch of dead grass on fire. And I'm like, what are you doing, asshole? And he's like, uh, oh, my hands are cold. I was going to warm them up. And I'm like, shut up. And then the next thing I know, a wind comes by, and the entire vacant lot is on fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> like a wild what you do? Fire. Just leg it. I took my jacket off, and I started beating the fire down. And the funny thing about that was it was a brand new fucking jacket <laughs> that my mom had just got for me and was like, take care of this jacket. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And it was one of those, like, nylon puffy jackets, because this is the 80s, you know? <laughs> and so it just melted. Get a bullock in. Uh, well, I never told my mom, but uh, the jacket, I took it to school the next day, and I hung it up, like, on the hook at school, and I never brought it home again. <laughs> and then my mom would be like, where's your jacket? I'm like, oh, I left it at school. And she's like, bring it home. And I'm like, yeah, it wasn't cold enough. It's too hot on the bus. So I just left it at school. And she's like, bring your jacket home. And I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> and the last day of school, she's like, did you bring your jacket home? And I'm like, mom, it's May. Why would I bring my jacket home? And then I just never told her that the thing was just a burnt pile of shit. So did you have to be cold some days? I was cold for a winter because, <laughs> <laughs> because of Solomon. But the important thing is I never got caught and I never got in trouble. <laughs> That's a conversation I had with Millie at home yesterday. It was determined that I have one gray hair in my oh, beard. And uh, Millie goes, Dad, I'm really worried about you. And I go, why? And she goes, well, you're getting a lot older. And I go, excuse <laughs> me? She goes, I mean, your face is gray now. And soon you're going to be too old and mommy's going to have to marry a new daddy. And I don't know if I'm going to like the new daddy. <laughs> and I go, are you and mommy talking about this? And she goes, sometimes in the car. <laughs> I had a girlfriend one time who uh, told me she used to talk to trees. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was like, oh, like you get bored or something and you're hanging out. And she's like, no, I, I mean, like I communicate with trees. And I was like, well, do they talk back? And she's like, well, she got real embarrassed and kind of shy. And she's like, uh, kind of. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and she's like, well, I, can, I mean, I communicate with nature, with the trees. And I was like, wait, like a tree hugger? And she's like, I do. I do hug trees. She got kind of indignant. And I was oh, like, God. all right. So was that girl different to the one who didn't like you watching her eat? Same girl. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, would refuse to be seen eating. This girl would wait for me to go to the bathroom, and then she would eat. I would look away on purpose so that she could take bites. <laughs> I had a dream last night that uh, I got arrested for playing video games drunk. I got a GUI, and then uh, the cops put like a monitoring bracelet on my leg so that I couldn't play video games drunk. Like my Xbox wouldn't turn on if I was drunk. <laughs> it was like a thing where you have to blow into it. Yeah, exactly, like a collar on a car. And so Ray was like, don't worry, I can hook you up. I have Ukrainian Xboxes. And I was like, what is that? And he was like, for some reason, the only Xboxes in the world that work are Ukrainian. It had something to do with like alcohol and their religion. So you can import Xboxes from the Ukraine to use them while you're drunk. Do we tell the story in a Let's Play yet if I piss my pants? Tell the story, Jeff. So I fell asleep on the sofa one night and uh, I was having this really intense dream where uh, I was yeah. at a party. And uh, everybody at the party was a dick. And then I went to the bathroom, and there was a basketball game on. No, it was football. There was a TV in the bathroom. It was on the opposite side of the toilet. So we were pissing. You can't see. So you had to, I had to keep looking behind me. And I was super interested. <laughs> so uh, I'm, like, turning around, and I keep wondering if I'm, if I'm pissing all over this guy's toilet because I'm not looking around peeing. And then I woke <laughs> up, and I'd piss myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jack, you remember back in the 80s uh -huh. when stealing cable was a thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it was a huge thing. Get the thing. black box. Yeah. 
So I was visiting some uh, family friends in uh, Nashville. They were they were like big cable thieves, uh-huh. right? It, it was was really cool because I could watch a lot of cool stuff. So we were watching fucking stolen cable with nice. my friend Billy one day. We're sitting there and we keep hearing this beep, beep, beep. Well, what the fuck is that noise? And it's slowly getting louder and louder. And eventually we look out the window and there's a dude like a yard over with like a fucking science fiction contraption with antennas and stuff <laughs> walking around like looking at houses <laughs> and it's going beep. Beep. And as he, he we watch him for a moment, like, what is this asshole doing? And it gets closer and closer, <laughs> and he gets into Billy's backyard, and it starts going beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and he looks up at the house, and we're looking out of the window, and Billy just reached over and unplugged the TV and the cable <laughs> box, and he goes beep, beep. And the guy goes, <laughs> he like shakes up for a second, and he looks around, and he's like, huh. And he just turned around and walked the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day, Caleb was taking a picture, and he was, like, posing like he was throwing a football, and then Jeff took the football from him and then just drove off with it. Like, he was like, go long, like an idiot. So I was like, yeah, throw me the football. So he threw me the football, and I was like, all right, cool, see you guys later. And then I left. And he was, like, running down the road after me. (laughs) (laughs) That was fucking funny. I threw the football in the back seat, and then I came back, and I went back to grab the football, and I realized I had a basketball in the back seat because Millie and I just played basketball, so I gave it that to him. And the fucking look of confusion on his face was priceless. Do you guys ever have sex dreams? Griffin has them occasionally, and I'm jealous because I never have them. And when I do, they go horribly wrong. So last <laughs> night, I actually was thinking to myself before I went to bed, it'd be cool to have a sex dream. So I go to bed last night, and I have a fucking sex dream. Kind of. Here's what my sex dreams are like. Here we go. I got to go to Vegas for work. I'm staying there by myself. I'm sitting at a bar drinking, because it's me, and uh, <laughs> I'm just sitting at the bar, hanging out, talking to the bartender. Nice guy, by the way. That comes into play later. And uh, fucking lo and behold, Jenny goddamn McCarthy comes and sits at, nice. next to me at the bar. And so I'm just sitting there, drinking my drink, minding my own business, having a, a, I believe it was a gin and tonic. At some point, she leans over and she says something about my tattoos or something. She's making small talk. And I was like, oh. So I make small talk back. And we fucking hit it off. We're joking around, and I, she's interesting. And then at some point, she's getting flirty. And she's like, you know, I'm leaving town soon. Maybe we should have some fun. She's saying shit like that. And I'm like, ugh. So I fake having to go to the bathroom, <laughs> right? And yeah. then I call Griffin, and I go, listen, I don't know what to do. I love you. But Jenny McCarthy is making a pass at me. What do I do? And Griffin goes, uh, well, first off, I don't care who it is. You absolutely cannot sleep with her. And I go, all right. But Griffin goes, however, I will allow you because it's Jenny McCarthy, and this is a dream. I will allow you. <laughs> she says that in a dream. She goes, I will allow you to make out with her. And I'm like, fuck, I'll take that. So I come back from the bathroom, and Jenny McCarthy's like, maybe we should get another drink and then uh, go somewhere private and talk. And I'm like, I can do that. I go to the bartender, and I go, hey, I need to get another drink. And the bartender goes, I need to see your ID. And I go, but I, I've already bought, like, three drinks from you. And Jenny McCarthy's looking at me like I'm an asshole. So I'm like, okay. And so I go into my wallet, and I can't find my ID. It's not there. And I'm like, uh. And I'm like, come on, man. Have a, I'm like giving him the look like it's Jenny McCarthy, dude. And, uh, and the guy's like, I don't make exceptions for anybody. And I'm like, okay. I start retracing my steps. Can't find it in the bathroom. I can't find it like in my hotel room. I can't find it anywhere. And I come back, and she's looking more and more like annoyed. And I go to the bartender, and I'm like, I can't find my ID. I don't know. I must have lost it. And the guy goes, okay. And he pulls out my ID, and he hands it to me. And he goes, you left this on the table and walked away. I just did you a favor, buddy. Next time you won't forget your ID. And I'm like, you fucking prick. And I'm like super out of breath. So I, uh, I go to Ginny and I go, I, I got my ID. I can get us drinks now. And she goes, I have to leave for the airport soon. I don't have time for drinks. And I go, oh, okay. Well, it was nice talking to you and stuff. And she goes, no, I still want to go somewhere private and talk. And I go, uh, oh, okay. So we go outside by the pool. I sit next to her and she goes, no, sit, sit closer. Come sit next to me. Sit in my lap. She goes, I think you're really funny. So I'm just like, well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're amazing in every way. She's like, huh. And she reaches in to kiss me. And my mouth is super dry because I'd been running around. And she's like, you've got cotton mouth. And I go, oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, it's because I was looking for the ID and I didn't have time to, to get the drink. And my, my, my mouth is just dry. I'm sorry. I can go get a drink right now. And she goes, nah, it's too late. I got to catch that flight. Anyway, it was nice talking to you. Bye. And then I woke up. Oh, oh man. <laughs> That's the worst. What a loser. You, that that sucks. Yourself. I fucking suck. Do you guys remember when I had that sex stream with Jenny McCarthy? Yeah, I had another one the other night. Do you guys know the comedian Jenny Slate? I was having a dream the other night, and we were in L.A. for a party for some work thing, and she was there, and she was just, like, really fucking cool and, like, funny, and we were joking and hitting it off and stuff. And then Griffin and Millie were there, too, and then they were like, we had to go back to Austin because Griffin had to do a chainsaw carving or something. And so I was like, cool, I'll just hang out here with Jenny Slate. And uh, we were just hanging out, shooting the shit, and, you know, having a, a, a lovely time. And then at some point she was like, gave me a hug. And it was like a sexually charged hug. And my dick was like, hello. And, uh, and then she like nuzzled my neck a little bit. And I was like, I was like, oh boy, 
Duh. And then she's like, do you want to go back to my hotel room with me? And I was like, oh, whoa. I was like, wow. You, uh, and she's like, yeah, for sex, idiot. And I'm like, oh, uh, well, I am married. And she's like, I don't see your wife. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, wow. she's damn. Slut. So I was like, uh, hold on a second. I got to make a phone call. And she goes, you're going to call your wife and ask if you can have sex with me, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, well, make it fast. And I was like, okay. So I walked out of the room, and I called Griffin, and I was like, hey, you're not going to believe it, but that Jenny Slate chick, she hit on me. And Griffin's like, what? And I was like, yeah, she, she wants to have sex with me. And Griffin's like, excuse me? And I'm like, listen, it's, this is a dream, so it shouldn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, I don't care if it's a dream. I will wake up in the real world, and I will remember this. <laughs> if you have sex with her in this dream. And I was like, are you, she was like, I will know. And I was like, Damn, okay. Dude. At that point, you got to know, are you in your dream or are you in Griffin's? She'll fucking kill you. So that was the end of the dream. She was like, I will know. And I was like, okay. okay. And then I woke up. I'm getting real sick of not getting laid in my dreams, though. I like how faithful you are, even in dream form. Yeah, Griffin said I was stupid. She was like, stop putting this on me. I don't care if you sleep with women in your dreams. And I'm like, obviously you do. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the time how I was driving home from Bernie's house after making Rivers Blue and I hit a deer and I didn't know what to do about it because I felt terrible and I called Griffin, we were just dating and I was like, she probably likes animals and I'm going to fuck this thing up and so I called her and I'm like, what do I do? And she was like, you hit a deer? And I was like, yeah, I don't know what to do. And she goes, you need to go back and run it over and kill it. And I, I was like, is, is it alive and she's like, still? is it still alive? And I go, oh, yeah, I heard it yelling. And she goes, you need to turn around and kill it. And I'm like, well, how do I kill it? And she's like, you're going to have to run it over. And I was like, fuck. And so I turn around, I come back, and it's in the middle of the road, like sitting there going, Nyeh! like that. And I have this big pickup truck, but I was looking at it, and I was trying to figure out how to hit the deer to kill it in the most humane way without flipping my truck. And so I'm looking at it, and I, I size it up, I'm like pulling up to it, and then backing up, and pulling, getting it right, and then I back up to what I think is a good distance. And then I floor it, <laughs> and as I hit the gas, the deer gets up and runs away, and I go, oh, thank God, and another deer runs in front of me, and I hit that deer. Jeff, if you ever hit me with a car, don't come back for me, okay? I Fucking was leave me there in the road. trying to keep Griffin from breaking up with me. And I remember driving, I was, after, uh, after that happened, I was horrified, and I was like, there is no way I'm having sex tonight. Fuck. <laughs>